My name is Dane Zimmerman. Since the age of 14 years old, my passion has been playing music and collecting guitars. In 2016, after 25 years in the construction business, I took a chance and I opened my own guitar shop. Now, seven years later, it's become one of the most popular guitar stores in the Phoenix area. A great day for me is buying, selling, trading, and repairing guitars. So welcome to the Zim's Guitars YouTube channel. Okay, so I'm back at the store and I got some guitars out of this locker. So here's the first one that came out of it. And it's an old uh, Silvertone bass. You got the old dolphin, uh, what do you call the headstock? Dolphin nose, something like that. And so, yeah, it's a black single pickup bass guitar. She's in really, really rough shape. You look at the back here, you maybe got some electronics. Maybe I can get this working. This would be a really good, you know, one of my guitar resurrection videos so yeah a bass guitar right there no silver tone it's cool maybe i can put that thing together we'll see what happens okay here's the next guitar i think i got five or six guitars out of the locker really old fender case and so it looks just like you know, a parts caster of some sort. You got these EMGs um, on what looks like to be a wooden pick guard. And uh, it looks like there's some quality parts down in here. Big swimming pool route, really ugly body. Uh, missing. Well, no, it's got a couple of black saddles on the bridge. A really ugly green body. But I think the neck is in good enough condition. Uh, 60s or a 50s style neck where the truss rod adjustment's down here in the heel. And it's got this old case, but she's pretty beat up. But it did come in this old fender case. All right, so that's the first two. I'll do some unzipping. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got a. Uh, this came out of the locker, and it said Breed Love, and I'm like, okay, cool. And uh, let's see what's inside here. So it's a nylon string classical. Eric, can you read what that says in there? Manuel Rodriguez E. Eos. <laughs> So what brand is Made this? in Spain. Okay. I thought it was a... Uh, this is a nice one, huh? Yeah. Clear coat sort of... Uh, Looks like two different kinds of milk. tuners. Two different tuners on there. Um, yeah. Rosewood board. Okay. That can be fixed up and resold. Yeah, it's not bellied up too much. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. It's almost in tune. Okay, cool. So I got an acoustic out of it. You know, I aim, aim the camera in here and sometimes that'll give you a better view. Yeah, okay, so I can put that thing back together and restring yeah, I thought, it. I thought it was a Ramundo, but cedar top, nice looking cedar top. Yeah. Okay, so this is the last one that came out of the locker. And when I saw this case right here, I was like, oh yeah, come on now, baby. Give me something. <laughs> we opened it up. And it's one of those old Japanese... Uh, no, maybe it's a silver tone, right? Yeah, 1960s. Yeah. Or it's one of those Japanese, like a K or a Global or one of those kind of things. Look what he did with the ground wire here. <laughs> so three pickups, a lot of switches. Uh, yeah, so I thought these were Japanese. 
So, yeah, there's that. The case is all jacked up. You know, it would probably be worthwhile for me to see if I could fix this case. Because it just sort of came apart right here. Now, I might be able to glue that and clamp that really good. Because this is an old Gibson Les Paul case. And uh, I don't know what year it is, but uh, there might be some value in that if I can, if I could re-glue that and clamp that and shine that up a little bit. So anyhow, guys, those are the guitars that came out of the locker. Um, I'm glad that I got some guitars. None of them are just like, oh, Rod, I scored. But, you know, they are what they are. And it'll, it'll add, you know, to uh, hopefully a profit. Okay, so this is the one guitar that came out of the storage locker. Uh, that seems like it's in really good condition. And uh, I just put strings on it yesterday. And this thing says it's handcrafted in Madrid. So, made in Spain. So I was kind of happy to get my hands on this one. Let's see here if my tuner's dead or not. And when you put uh, strings on these nylons, you know, it takes like a month of tuning to get them. To get them where you want them. Until they finally stretch out enough and kind of lock in. Yeah, so that's that. And now I brought some of the amplifiers that I dug out of there. Let me show you a couple of the amps that I got. Okay, yeah, so this amp came out of the locker. And it's a Vox, and it's the Cambridge Reverb with a 10-inch speaker. You can see all the controls are up here on the top. And, uh... I know I looked on Reverb real quick, and they do have some of these that are solid state, but this one you can definitely see right here that she does have tubes in it. Tube amp, old Vox. You can see the Reverb tanks underneath there, some sort of padding. And uh, so, yeah, it's missing something right here. But uh, this is what came out of the locker. And I don't know, I, I, the good news is I have some good amp repair guys. But I think I will, you know, check and see if this thing has a fuse in it. And if it has a fuse in it, I'll plug it in and see what happens. The worst that can happen is it's just not going to come on. And uh, we can test this thing out. It's really nice when you get something, you turn it on, you plug it in, and it works. Let's do that. Let me flip the camera around. Okay, so it's a Vox Cambridge Reverb. It's just got the two prong on here. Let's see what happens when I plug it in. Okay, she's plugged in. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. Absolutely nothing happened. So, wait a minute, the light is on. Oh, I'm not hearing noise. Look at that right there. The light is on. I'm hearing noise. Oh my God, this thing is working. Let me bring you back here. guitar hanging right on the wall right here and we're just going to plug this thing in and input number one This 
one is the reverb. It still needs serviced, but it's currently working. So let me unplug this. So one thing that it needs to make it safe is it needs a new cord on there that has the has the three prongs so it can be grounded nicely. And you can take the tubes out and you can spray all the tube sockets. The chassis right here is kind of loose. That needs tightened up and back in there nicely. Uh, giant pad over this reverb tank looks really ugly in my opinion. It's this thick foam stuff. And I don't have the back panel. But other than that, it's working. So uh, I'm super happy about that. But it's still going to get serviced. And so there is some money that is involved in, in servicing an amp, but it's already working. So what? that's a bonus right there. Okay, so the next item that we got here out of the locker, Twin Reverb Fender Amp. And uh, again, it's still got the old two two prong cord on there. I see a big giant reverb take across here. Uh, it looks like all the knobs are on here. It's got one, two, three, four big power tubes. One, two, three, four, five preamp tubes. And this is the front of the amp right here. And so, my best guess is this is a 1960, what year did they do, you guys can help me out here, what year did they do the blackface, uh, I'm going to say 66, right, I think 64 would be brown tolax, I don't know, I got my years up, all goofed up, I, th I have a 67, Bandmaster that's a silver face, but this is the black face and it's got the drip edge here That's kind of falling apart But yeah, it's an old twin Black face no speakers in it. I Think they call this a drip edge so I'm gonna say it's um it Says Fender musical instruments right here there's no master volume like what they did in the in the 1970s. So I'm going to say there's a way to look at this and, and research exactly what it is. But I'm going to say this is 1965, 1966, and this was in that locker. And I freaked out when I saw this inside that locker. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. So... Yeah, it's missing speakers, reverb, uh, it's got the two switches. There is a fuse in it. I'm just wondering, if I put speakers in it, is it just going to fire right up? See, here's for the reverb tank. I don't see any speaker wires laying around down in there. But yeah, this was in the locker, so that's a good score. I'll have to have it fixed up. All right, so also in the locker was this Music Man amp. 
And I worked on this yesterday. And I put a speaker in it. And I found the grill cloth in the locker. And I cleaned and super cleaned this Tolex. Got it all going good. And I believe you got... So you got a volume, you got a treble and a bass, and it's got little arrows right here that show you where the zero zero is at. And then you've got your equalizer on, equalizer off, all the way across here. It's all set. So this is a music man made right in Anaheim, California. I'm going to guess it's 1970s. Uh, it's not an R, R, is it the RG120? An RH120? But this one's kind of got the tilt back. I looked on reverb, I looked on uh, uh, eBay and stuff. I don't see anything that has sold that looks anything like this one. No reverb on this amp, no uh, tremolo. But this one came out of that locker and and I mean, what a great score. So, uh, got a few more things to show you. I have one more amp here at the shop that I can show you. The rest of the stuff is still at home in my garage. But let me just show you the one more amp real quick. Okay, so this amp came out of the locker. And it's a Mesa Boogie. And I'm very excited to see this thing. And it's heavy. But this looks like the F30 Mesa Boogie. And I turned it on. It doesn't have any um, power to it. It does have a fuse in there, though. But yeah, Mesa Boogie F30. I will have to have this thing serviced. I see it's got tubes in it. For some reason, when you plug it in, it's not coming on. But this thing, wow, this thing weighs a ton. Here, I'm just gonna plug it in for you guys so we can see together. Get an extension cord over here. So. Yeah, so, boom. Oh my God, it came on. I plugged it in up front. I guess I had my power strip off up there or something. Okay. All right, let's plug a guitar in. Okay, here we go, let's see what happens.
It's working. Got a little static right here when I turn the gain down. Tons of reverb. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have that changed. Wow! Score right there. I'm almost thinking this amp might have paid for the whole entire locker. Again, we got the hand always kind of chewed up. I might be able to fix that or replace that. We got a sticker or something that's been on here. I can get some glue gone and clean that up. But all these power amps, or all these, uh, all these guitar amps, they all need to be serviced. Whenever you buy a tube amp in a used guitar shop or a pawn shop, I don't want to really lug myself in with the pawn shops but uh, when you buy a tube amp out in the world you might as well just go ahead and say hey it needs serviced and because these things have been sitting in a storage locker for years and again this little toggle switch right here I mean it's working but it's uh it's kind of wobbly around it needs sprayed out because you got all kinds of uh, noise in the pots and the potentiometers are all noisy. But yeah, score. I did good on that locker. And uh, I got a bunch of more stuff, but I'm kind of excited to just hurry up and get this video done and, and get it out. So, uh, you know, I there was some stuff like that Fender cab. I ended up with two Fender cabinets and... Uh, and I ended up with um, an acoustic, that Fender Acoustasonic amp, and a couple of other things. But, um, you know, this Mesa Boogie works. It's really surprising me that these amps are working. I have hope that if I put speakers in that Fender Twin, that thing will fire right up. So there you guys have it. Thank you guys for watching. Everybody have a great day. See ya. Thank you.